Unit two, the importance of urban food production. Uh, in unit one, we looked a little bit at the importance of sustainable practices. In unit two here, we're going to look at why urban food production is important. First, current methods of food production. The current methods of food production in the developed world are centered in rural areas on large farms. The food produced there is then shipped to transportation or processing or packaging facilities before, it's being, before being shipped once again to the consumer. And this food system creates problems or issues that we'll explore in the next several slides. The first is longer distance to market. The food is produced in rural areas, not in the area where it's going to be consumed. So it needs to be transported great distances. This can result in less freshness for the food, high transportation costs, increased pollution, more traffic on the road, and more opportunities to mishandle the food, uh, potentially causing problems. Also food production away from the areas where food is consumed results in food production invisibility. We don't know where or how our food was produced except for the minimal information given on food labels, which may include the country of origin and organic labeling. If a particular food product is not labeled as organic, then we have no idea what system was used to produce it. And most of us have limited interaction with food producers or food production techniques. There are some additional issues with our current food production methods. There's a lack of opportunity for entrepreneurs. Most farming these days is done on large corporate farms. Um, it's difficult for a smaller producer to get into the field uh, in a situation like that. Also, urban areas are becoming what are known as food deserts, as very little food is produced locally and the distribution of food within urban areas um, is quite inequitable as we'll see in, in a much later uh, unit. Urban areas also have less food security as the food availability depends on the transportation system. Disrupt the transportation system, food stops coming in, in an average urban grocery store, there's enough food to feed the population that depends on that store for only a few days. Those stores are constantly resupplied. It's difficult to have food security when you're as dependent on a transportation system as urban areas are. Finally, cultural and ethnic foods can be difficult to obtain as food becomes more homogenous due to mass production. And we'll look at that topic again in a little bit. Uh, first, a note on food security, that term that I just used. Food security in this section refers to the availability of food, sufficient availability of food, rather than the safeness of the food itself. An area has high food security if the majority of the food consumed there is produced there or very close by and is less dependent on uh, transportation. The importance of urban food production? Well, if we take each one of those issues and turn it around, look at it from the other side, it becomes a reason that urban food production is important. <clears throat> Here's a photograph of an urban farm in the city of Chicago in the background, you can see the Sears Tower, now called the Willis Tower. Um, and it's a quite large production. And you can see that there are a number of different crops being grown there. So what can farms like that, what can local production mean? Well, there's less distance to market, which can mean fresher, more nutritious food. It can also mean lower transportation costs or possibly no transportation costs if you go to purchase your food from the farm stand at the farm that's producing it. Particularly in an urban environment where people are likely to be able to walk to a local farm stand. There's less pollution due to the transportation. There's less traffic 
because less transportation is needed. And when the food goes from the producer to the consumer, there are fewer opportunities in between there for mishandling of food. In addition, food production becomes visible. We will know where and how our food was produced and opportunities exist for average people to become more involved with food production. Some additional benefits include opportunities for entrepreneurs on a local level, something that doesn't exist in a large corporate farm setup that we currently have. Uh, local urban food production makes urban areas less of a food desert. Food security can be enhanced when food availability isn't as dependent on a transportation system. And cultural and ethnic foods can be produced local to the areas of consumption. So let's look at distance to market. Less distance to market can mean fresher food, lower transportation costs, less pollution, and less traffic. With traditionally produced food, the food is taken from the production area or the farm to a processing facility where it's either processed or packaged for sale or processed to an intermediate form and then transported to yet another facility for additional processing and packaging. And from there, the food is transported yet again to wholesalers or distribution facilities from which it is transported yet again to reach the point of sale to the final consumer. This often involves transportation of the original product hundreds or even thousands of miles before it reaches the ultimate consumer. A grain elevator, such as shown in this picture, is a storage and intermediate transportation facility. So grain is trucked here from the farm. So corn, soybeans, wheat, whatever type of grain is produced locally where the elevator is, um, the grain is trucked there from the farm and then shipped out by rail or barge in some cases where the uh, grain elevators are located on rivers or lakes to either another intermediate shipping facility or a processing facility. With locally produced foods, the consumer can obtain food directly from the producer. And often the consumer is the producer often without the food being transported at all. In addition, the food is available in its basic form without processing or the addition of preservatives or even things like salt and sugar. Food produced locally requires a minimum of transportation, so those additional costs are minimized or even eliminated. Obviously, without transporting via truck, train, airplane, or ship, no pollution is generated from those sources, and that can also mean less traffic. Here's a photograph of a farmer's market, Dane County Farmer's Market in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, local farmers sell their produce here. People in the city flock to this area to purchase that fresh produce. Proper handling. When food has to be transported, it has to be handled properly. This can mean anything from being careful not to bruise fruits and vegetables to maintaining proper temperatures for perishable items such as meat, poultry, and dairy products. Each time food is moved, there is an opportunity for it to be mishandled. Many refrigerated trucks do not maintain proper temperature, and trucks are not always clean and sanitized between loads. This can result in contaminated food. Here is a link on this page to a news story about one portion of the food transportation chain to refrigerated trucks. Uh, something I think it makes interesting reading. Visible food production. With locally produced food, we know where and how the food was produced and by who. This can lead to a closer relationship between the consumer and the producer and a better understanding of food production by the average consumer and opportunities exist for becoming more involved with food production for the average person. This can be done in several ways. The consumer, the consumer can become a producer, growing a garden or having a plot in a community garden or becoming in a, involved in a share the risk system. Share the risk, what's that? With locally produced food, the consumer may have the opportunity to be involved in a share the risk, share the reward program. These programs often involve the consumer agreeing to support local producers, and when harvest begins, the consumer gets a weekly 
<clears throat> allotment from the harvest. If production is high, the consumer pur purchases more according to the agreement. If production is low, the consumer purchases less, and the producer, of course, makes less. Entrepreneurial opportunities. Entrepreneurial opportunities can exist in local food production. They can range from being a grower or producer, hosting farmers markets, arranging local delivery to those unable or unwilling to get to the local point of sale, and education and training in growing and in food production. Food deserts and security. When food is produced in urban areas, the area becomes somewhat less of a food desert. At the same time, reliance on the transportation system, which is reduced, which res results in enhanced food security. As seen in many natural disasters, such as hurricanes, the transportation system of even developed countries can be disrupted, and sometimes for quite a while, resulting in shortages of basic supplies. Local food production has the potential to at least limit some of these shortages. Of course, producing enough food in a city such as Chicago to feed all the residents of the city is not likely to happen anytime soon, but it is a goal to work for. Cultural integrity. In a previous course, we looked at a little bit at uh, cultural integrity and what it can mean. And essentially some foods are very important to some cultures, either from a cultural or religious significance. Um, and cultural integrity then can be enhanced by local urban food production. People can become involved with food production and grow their own food, or in areas with high concentrations of specific cultural and or ethnic groups, producers can maximize their sales by producing food specific to those groups. That's something that doesn't happen on multi-hundred acre monoculture farms because it doesn't make financial sense for a large producer to devote a few acres to a different type of crop. However, with locally produced food, particularly food grown on a smaller scale, it can be a very profitable venture. Nutrition education. Uh, we'll look at some of the social issues involved uh, with food, and those include health problems such as obesity and uh, diabetes, heart disease, um, that sort of thing. Um, and local urban food production has the potential to become an education center about nutrition. Schools can become involved either by becoming producers with students planting gardens and caring for and harvesting the food to be used for lunches, etc. cetera, um, by simply being able to visit local food producers and understand what real freshness is and what nutrition is, and by local producers offering instruction to consumers in producing their own food. Ecological education, again, urban food production provides opportunities for education about ecology. Uh, we can discuss things like composting and plant nutrients and how plants use those nutrients and care of the soil so that we can continue to grow plants on that soil year after year. Um, the importance of clean water to the plants and to the people and closed loop systems or systems that generate no waste or pollution. All of those are areas that can be demonstrated with local food production. So in summary, urban food production is important to increase food security, reduce food deserts, create awareness of food systems and production, reduce pollution and traffic, increase opportunities for education about nutrition and food in general, for cultural integrity, to create a sense of community, for ecological education, and for nutrition, as we mentioned, nutrition education. So urban food production has great importance and you can pick any one of these areas and it would make urban food production worthwhile, I believe. So that concludes unit two.